What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Get Paid for Your Pat. Today, I have two guests on the show, uh, Mr. James and Ben. They're the co-founders of Arrive and Thrive, which is, I think is an awesome brand name. So we'll talk about how you guys came up with that. Uh, we're also going to talk about partnerships because uh, as, as you guys, uh, we've, you know, we've known each other for, what is it, a year now? Uh, and I feel like uh, you guys really have a great partnership uh, running the company. Uh, and uh, I think that's a really interesting topic that we never really discussed much. So I want to get into that, but, um, but yeah, James, Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, been, absolutely. Uh, trying to make it happen for a while and we finally got here. I know, right? I know. I must have asked you like you guys like five times. <laughs> do you go, do you want to be that prepared? <laughs> I uh I wish I wish we were going to be that prepared. <laughs> this is not your first podcast, is it? Uh, as a company, yeah, yeah. Nice. We've done some, right, we've well. done some interviews for um, like uh, where we have properties, local newspapers, and things like that. We've done over the phone interviews, but we've never actually done this together. So it'll be interesting. Awesome. Well, uh, let's uh let's have some fun today here on the podcast. Uh, let's kick off with uh your uh origin story and one of you guys can can take this but tell us uh tell us how arrive and thrive was uh founded and the journey that you've gone through up until this moment yeah i'll i'll start that and then you can feel free to take over at some point but uh james and i met in la uh in a real estate investment group um so we were there we were both already in the space or or wanting to get deeper into the space and um and I think we just realized that uh, we both were sort of showing up every week, doing the things we were saying we were going to do. Uh, we're actually like taking action, had things going on. Uh, and we got to a place where we realized, oh, this guy is also like a great guy. So we started sort of hanging out a little bit more, looking for something to do together. We thought maybe we'd do some multifamily. We, you know, we were trying to figure out exactly what it was. Um, and we, we really dug into, we decided we wanted to find something that had a lot more why I had done a bunch of, you know, flips and things like that. And that's great because, you know, there's a paycheck and that's fun. Um, but I think just the money is not the driving force for either of us. Uh, it's an awesome bonus. Um, we love it. We love being able to make money at what we do, but, but it's just not, it's not the driving force. So we talked about several things. Um, uh, that might be something that would keep us motivated for a long time. And, and we got into the short-term rental space, the ability to do uh, work in certain industries, um, serve certain people and guests. And we really both just resonated with that uh, a lot. We started in sort of like hospital, you know, housing, um, you know, medical stays and things like that. And, um, and we've sort of woven into now a place that we're really, really loving, which is uh, the backgrounds that he and I have which is uh, we do sort of historic stays, uh, you know, historic properties, boutique uh, sort of hotels, inns. And so this is a property that we have um, that is like, you know, 170 years old. We turned it into luxury lodging, you know, really kind of like a, a higher end uh, property for that market. And the place in front of him right now is a place that we've just gotten that we're, we're starting on as well, which is right down the street from this. Uh, we want to be our own competition, you know. <laughs> Nice, yeah. And for the listen, those who are listening to just the audio, uh, you, if you go to YouTube, if you look at um, you search for get paid for get paid for your pad, you'll be able to watch these interviews on YouTube, and you can actually see James and Ben's background. Um, so where where are you guys at now? Um, how many markets? How many properties? You know, how many do you own versus manage? So, uh, well, we were talking about this today. We started with. Uh rental arbitrage and one property in Orange County, uh, which is south of uh, south of LA. And there we we built that up to uh, nine apartments down there. We have, we also got the first job that we actually ever did while we were coming up with this, somebody asked us to manage their property for them for short-term rental. And we realized that there was, that there was, uh, money to be made in that but also it was a really nice low barrier to entry managing somebody else's property so that to be like you have to have the want to do that you have to 
it, it's it, it's interesting because you're balancing both an owner and the guest in that instance, right? There's two people I'm trying to please um, and do the best that I can for. So that the management side of things has really grown through um, references, I suppose, other people recommending us. Uh, so LA, Northern California, Nashville, we have um, we have places that we manage. And then what you're looking at there with Ben and I is uh, we started to look at maybe what what do uh, secondary, what we consider to be secondary capital cities have to offer. Again, a much lower barrier to entry when it comes to putting money down. Um, for us, we love these kinds of properties. So that's they're super exciting to us. Like a historical property, a historical stay is something that we would really want to do. Uh, so when we started with what Ben has behind him, uh, they had made that into the, you can see the carriage houses on the left and the main house is where behind them, there's three large apartments we've created in the main house. So each floor is a separate apartment of about 2000 square feet. And the carriage house is a two bed apartment of uh, about 17, maybe 1700 square feet. And then we, de we decorate with antique furniture, uh, just trying to give that experience we're in Springfield, Illinois there. So that's the capital of Illinois, but it's also where Lincoln comes from. So there's a big historical influence and there's a big historical tourism industry as well. Um, and that's kind of where we've sat. There's a lot of buildings like this in the country that are looking to be, I guess, restored or looked after because they're expensive to, to do that. And we're finding that the model that we have allows uh, not only for us to make some money, but it also allows us to preserve these buildings, which is really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the it, it's interesting because I, I hear you guys, you, you guys share in the mastermind, you share like the, the stuff you're buying and, you know, we're here in California and we're looking at those prices and, um, I, you know, every time I'm like shocked, I'm like, wait, like, did you miss a zero or something there? <laughs> <laughs> We sort of felt the same way, I will say. When it's, we weren't looking to buy in Springfield, we have fallen in love with Springfield. Uh, but but it was the building that spoke to us first and foremost. The you know this that that place, and we were like, I think we have to like, I think we have to go look at this. We ran numbers and we ran numbers and we were like, Springfield, okay, Springfield, let's go check it out. I guess, and it turns out it just has been really uh, awesome. And we, you know, I think we have this phrase now that that we're sort of saying, which is history loves company. We like the idea of being able to like, let somebody have the experience of staying in a historical place with historical furniture, feel like that's part of the reason you're coming to stay. Um, and what we're realizing through this is we're also learning a lot about each market that we're doing this in um, so that we can present that to the guest. It's, 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 it becomes a part of, it's not just a bed. It becomes a part of the reason you're coming to town. Um, so, so again, yeah, we're just really, really enjoying it. Just to go back over that point as well, Jasper, uh, both Ben and I have lived, I live in LA, Ben has lived in LA, uh, he's in Nashville now. So both of us are very aware of of very high prices for property and, and expanding prices, particularly in Nashville at the moment. So there's actually a warning there, which is you have to be very careful because the truth is in these places, there really are properties, that is the market. And so someone from California can go in and overpay for a property like that because it seems too good to be true or it seems too cheap. Um, when actually I did, when I did the comps on this, the truth was what we paid for it was what the market would allow for it to be. So I just say like, it can be very tempting to come from outside and just be like drop 500,000 on 8,000 square feet because why wouldn't you when actually it's not, it's not worth that in that market. So mm. I agree with you. It's like mind blowing when you're in California that there are properties like this that you can get for that price. And there's just that part of the research that one has to do in those areas just to make sure like we don't get carried away with this is too good to be true and end up paying more than it's actually worth. Because there's still work to do on these properties, right? It's not just the buying. There's another probably yeah. 200,000 that one put, put into that property to get it ready to go. 
this property so we're doing right now is we're going to be putting more into the property than than we're buying it for you know mm -hmm. um, right and we were looking to do significantly more and when you, when you guys do those renovations like because you i know you live in different places and then you go to different markets like do you are you on site um to manage those renovations so because we didn't know you know like that one behind ben is the first place that we have ever bought as a company and it was kind of our how do we make the buying a possibility because that's the part that we're really excited about is owning and and operating so we that's the first one we obviously don't live in springfield now my my uh fiance's parents live in the town just next door they all know springfield very well um but the answer to your question is for that one, I I moved to Springfield for six months oh, okay. and oversaw what was happening. And what's happened in that time is we've been able to build a very reliable relationship with a contractor, with a realtor, with a with an architect that will require us not to be there for this for for the um the kind of renovation side of things anymore. We wholeheartedly trust our uh, contractor who does amazing work and we know that if she has an issue she will get hold of us but otherwise she will be working every day on that property to get it done uh, which you you know that's the reason that i would i was there last time was we used a different contractor not the greatest uh, relationship we ended up having but i had to be there every day to make sure that they showed up mm. right so picking Picking a great contractor, I guess, is a really important part of the project, right? Hugely important in so many ways. You know, <clears throat> I think tethering it to what you were saying about partnerships in general, it's just another example of you need to find somebody who's not only fantastic at what they do, they care about your project, your property, your, you know, the outcome of this place. You want them to be as proud of it as you. Um but you also need to find somebody who's not going to gouge you, who you can trust in that way. And you need to find somebody who cares about. So the details for us are so important. I've done, a, like I said, I've done a handful of flips where I was laying the floors and doing the electrical and running the plumbing. I've done that, all of that stuff. You love to get to a place where you're not having to do all of that stuff. And, and you realize not everybody does it to the standard that you would like um, or that you would expect. And so it is really important. I don't know that you can just pick a contractor and, and walk away ever in like a new relationship. But we now know for this example, our contractor wants the details done to the specs that either of us would, would want if we were hanging over their shoulder. Um, she's not happy unless it's like perfect. She's a perfectionist and, and we both love that. Um, and she's built Victorian homes before, like from the ground up. So like she knows the nuances of those kind of things, new and old. So, uh, no, it's, it's really, really important, I think, to do your due diligence and find the right person. And, you know, in this, in this instance, we were able to leverage relationships, um, it, through, through James's, you know, in-laws to be, uh, they, they introduced us to this contractor and, um, and at first we were with somebody else and it was not the greatest experience. We we learned to listen after we saw the quality of work she did and we would never look back on them. Awesome. Well, let's dive into uh, the partnership side. Um, what I find interesting, so you guys live in different locations and also you guys started a company together, right? Yes. And how did you get, so, who came up with the Arrive and Thrive brand? Because that's, that's a great brand. I mean, it was probably Ben, honestly, because that's he's really good at that stuff. He's really, really good at that, that the kind of branding of things. And I think we we tr we tried a few, you know, we were coming up with these names for LLCs as we were. You, you have to come up with a name for the LLC mm -hmm. and we wanted it to be cool. And we, we came up with like we wanted something that kind of rhymed and we didn't. It's, it's really this is a really interesting story. And I've forgotten about it. We came up with three because you have to come up with a backup. And one of them was Thrive and Shine. One of them was Arrive and Thrive. And there was one other. And I'll tell you, Jasper, we actually picked Thrive and Shine. Oh. And the person who created the LLC for us got the two confused and put Arrive and Thrive. 
And we were like, oh, I think we prefer it at this point. Okay. So it was there in the list, but it's kind of mistaken. I forgot, even as we're talking about it, I'd forgotten the story of how we actually ended up with the name. We came up with it and I think Ben came up with it, but it wasn't our first choice. And afterwards <laughs> we're like, why are we ever thinking about Thrive and Shine when we could have had Arrive and Thrive? That's so weird. But that's kind it, of the story behind it. It's how I've named both my children too. We come up with basically three names or four or five. And then we look at them when they're born and we're like, oh, you're definitely not that. You're definitely not that. Okay, this is your name. Um, but I think I think to sort of play on top of that, the going straight into the, the topic, I think it wasn't just me and it's very kind of you to assume something like that, but we, we put very much a lot of brainstorming power together. We're, one thing I think that we're really great at, because I've had different partnerships uh, in my life. And one thing I think we've really excelled at from the beginning is we're very open with each other. We're uh, respectful of each other. Um, we, we like to let each person's interests and strengths play out as something that they're able to do. Sometimes that we, we both like things. And so those are the places we spend a lot of time discussing together and coming up with creative stuff. You know, I may, there's a chance, maybe I had a little bit more to do with the actual kind of name we came up with, but it was through lots of discussions. And then the logo uh, was very much, we were both going back and forth on different things. James came up with something very close to what our logo ended up being. I went in and said, hey, what about this one little tweak? And lo and behold, that's the logo. And I think that that's the way it is with most things with us is, is I think we're good at letting our egos, checking our ego at the door uh, because we respect each other so much. Um, and, and I think that from my perspective and my past experiences, it's a huge part of it. Um, mm. because you also have to trust that person with your bank account, with your, you know, like we've got life policy, whole life policies. And we've got like, we're interwoven in a way that, that like not all business partnerships might be. Uh, and so, and so, yeah, I think, I think it's hugely important. People have asked us previously, like, Hey, I'm thinking about taking on a partner, like somebody else who does this, you know, in the market and we could merge properties and whatever as a management company. Uh, and I think it's an awesome, I think it's an amazing idea because I cannot imagine doing this without James, not just someone can't imagine doing this without James, partly because it's a ton of work and it's, it's customer support stuff, which we love when it goes good, but oh my gosh, do you get hammered when it's something out of your control a lot of times? And so it's nice to have somebody who you can just kind of go through it with, um, but but again, we're able to leverage each other's strengths and he works on things that I have never even seen that part of our business. And, and I hope there are parts that I do. I don't know that any are coming to me at the moment, sure. but, <laughs> but we're able to grow farther. You know, you're in a, a, a great partnership as well. And it, it, I, I can you imagine if you were doing every aspect of it? Hmm. No, yeah. I mean, you make a very good point. You know, I was going to ask like what makes a great partnership because because you're right, like it is, it feels lonely, like, you know, building, trying to build your own business. I've done it before and, and it gets, you know, demotivating. Um, and also sometimes you have to make decisions and you just don't know what decision to make. And then it's just so good to have somebody else to discuss it with. Because otherwise what you get is like you start postponing things because you're not sure what to choose. And, you know, it, it. So it's definitely it's definitely really beneficial to be in a partnership, but at the same time, you know, there's a partnership, a business partnership is a huge commitment. You know, like I'm I'm I don't know about if you guys are married, but I'm I married I'm married since about you know almost a year now, and uh, I almost compare it to a marriage. Like you're almost marrying somebody, right? And it's so it's huge. So there's it's not easy, I think, to find um, somebody that that you can form a great partnership with um, because there's a lot of things that have to align, I think, to create like a great partnership. So that's kind of what I wanted to get into now is like you mentioned one thing is like, you know, both kind of not being 
very egotistical people, right? It's like, cause there's going to be times where things go wrong and like you, you want to avoid getting into like a blaming type of situation where it's like, Hey, this is your fault. No, this is your fault. Like that kind of thing where, you know, you kind of have to, you have to always like be understanding of each other and always focus on like, okay, how can we, how can we as a partnership do this better in the future, regardless of, you know, whose mistake it was or, or whatsoever. Right. So, but what, what do you think are some other important aspects to focus on when, if you want to partner with somebody? Well, sorry. One thing that just came to me that I don't, I don't want to forget because it is actually, I think an easy thing to not think of up front. Um, and I, this is something I've read in like success stories about like Walt Disney and Roy Disney and, and, you know, I've seen in, in successful businesses and, and people that I've, I've, I've known, um, I think it does help. I don't think it's mandatory, but I think it does help if there is, <clears throat> like you were saying, you can get lost in, in kind of coming up with the, the, the answer for something. I think if you have somebody who has this, uh, a joy of, of exploring the, the greater concepts of like, you know, like, okay, what could we do? Like, I, I like to get creative. Okay, what are all these like? What are these ideas? Let's explore it as far as it can go. See if it hits a wall. Okay, what if we did that? This is a world where I love. But the problem is, I can get lost in that. James is able to go. That that we just talked about is super interesting. Let's expand upon it. Let's talk about this. Let's figure out the more nuance. And then he's just like, Poop, straight to work. I would still be going on how to make this the most unique, the most interested, the most, you know, whatever. And he's like already hit the ground running. He's got the, the you know, built into our, our, our book online. He's got like the things systemized. Okay, here are the steps we're going to take. You know, here's a reverse engineer of dates from this, from then to now. And it's really awesome because my two strengths are this creative sphere up in the clouds and getting, I'm very, I'm like a tech guy. So getting super lost into the nuanced detail of like technology or, or whatever the things are. So he's like, okay, here's a checklist. We've had the idea. I've now given the exact roadmap of what's going to happen. And here are things to do. And I'm just like happy as a clam down there, like checking things off my list and getting them done. So I do think, I guess that was a long-winded answer for, I think if you can have one, at least one of the people who is just get it done mindset, that will go a long way. Yeah, so I think that's a really... Go Sorry, ahead, I was just going to say, I think that expands on on, on the kind of, you were asking about what makes a good partnership. And look, I think that that is a, it's a, it's a great question. It's also super broad. Like what might make a great partnership for you doesn't necessarily make it for, for us. What I can say is I have been put with someone who supports my gaps. So where I am in Gap City, and I can tell you, I would never have done this by myself. I know I needed someone, and I'm so glad it's Ben, to, to help me to make this happen. Uh, and what we've discovered during our time is that we have some common overlaps of things that we like to do. But I remember in, in your course, we spoke about what are the things that give you energy and what are the things that don't. So that stuff that Ben's talking about, this kind of like high level looking at and creating i'm not really that interested in it i'm just like just tell me what to do and we'll do it or the technological technological side of things not my strength thankfully it's bent and so what's that what that has helped with is like he goes out and does that side of things and he comes back with the creative and we can talk about that stuff and then while he's doing that, that allows me to expand on this part of the business or this part of the business, or I can deal with the accounting or whatever it's been. We somehow have been given each other who, for the most part, kind of fills each other's, I hate to say it, but we like the spots that we don't really like, the other person is like, great, you don't like that? Great, I'll do it. And vice versa. So that really helps. Like if that's 80% of our partnership, there's also an element of like, oh my God, I like Ben so much because I found somebody who's willing to do the stuff I don't like to do with joy. 
and vice versa. He's like, oh my God, you, you like looking at listings? Cool, you go and look at listings for three hours and I'll do this this side of things. Like that is is very, very helpful. And the final part for me that really, really, he and I have a very similar work ethic. If his work ethic was like a large size different to mine, we would have some serious issues. There would be a lot of resentment going on. But the truth is, if I, I've, I don't know if I've ever come across somebody who is willing to work as hard as I am. And I, and I don't, that's not a big, it's not supposed to be a big head kind of thing. It's just, I work really hard and Ben works really hard and that works for us. Like I would be resentful if I was with a partner who was like, okay, you do it. Okay, you do it. That would in the end, if I feel like, and it's not even questions that we come up with. That is just Ben's kind of natural force is it needs to be done. Let's do it. And it's my natural force too. And that balance there kind of, for me, is a huge part of the success of our partnership too. Yeah. And to back on that, one thing that James, I don't know where this came up, but early, early, early in our partnership, uh, there are going to be some things that are that leftover space, which is like, neither of you really love it. Neither of you is really begging to be the person. Um, and and really all it comes down to is, okay, well, for us, it was some one of us will take the lead on this now. And eventually that'll be the first thing we like hire a service to take over, right? Um, and so, or, or whatever. So uh, we have gotten really good at at coming up with what each person is sort of in charge of. And this was something James brought in early on. Um, he's a much better manager than I am uh, uh, of people and of, of certain so many things. Uh, but he said, listen, let's, if we each know what we're in charge of, then we know when something comes in, you're responsible for it or I'm responsible for it. ultimately we're both responsible the company is responsible for it but like I've never had a moment of resentment towards or we've never had a moment where we really came up against something that neither of us did because we really have made it relatively clear even within our team like who oversees the team in this way who oversees the team in that way it's it's very clear and it's something we I feel like we do maybe once a year just uh, out of necessity probably but I think it's a great trick for anybody getting into a partnership or who's listening to this, who has a partnership, it can be a really strong tool to clarify what each person is doing and running and the buck stops there for those parts. Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So just to kind of recap some of the things you said, you know, I think that having opposite interests and weaknesses and strengths is, is super important. Uh, Eric and I, we're the same way. It's like, you know, the stuff that he loves, I, I hate. And the stuff uh, that he, <laughs> that's, what did I say? I can't remember. But the other way around is true as well. Um, and, uh, and and that's huge. So I think that's really, that's a very important thing to watch out for. <clears throat> because I've been in a partnership before with, with somebody who was very similar to me. And as a result, not only, not only did we both want to do the same things, we also neglected the 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 things that we both didn't really like, um, but at the same time, we also didn't have a different perspective when it came to decision making. And so, you know, we were just running. And we would think exactly the same way. There was no, there was no push, you know, push. Um, how do you say that? Like, just going back and forth, and then making the the best decision based on the discussion it was more like, hey, let's do this. Yes, sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. And then that way we we ended up making you know the wrong decisions because there wasn't that pushback right that exploration of what's the best what what makes the most sense here so um, I think that's really important um, and then like you said it's also the you know the mentality right the work ethic like obviously there's a, there's no there's always going to be things that you know neither of you guys really love doing right and the way that Eric and I do that is like if we look at who's who, who is um, more powerful in that area, right? So, for example, like I'm the numbers guy. He's high high level vision. 
creative person. So, you know, when it comes to like the bookkeeping and the accounting side, like I am, I, I have to own that. Right. I mean, it just makes more sense for me to own it. Do I love it? Not really, but because, because I can do, like you said, like, you know, 70, 80% of the stuff that I do is in my, in my, uh, my love corner, so to speak. Um, um, it's okay, you know, to have a few things that you don't really like. So yeah, that's a uh, good point. Um, uh, you, you bring up one, one other, which is, you know, you talk about, well, there's, there's this thing of, we have differences and therefore we we can, we can choose, we have somebody to bounce those things off. But I think the other part of that, that's super important is the ability to communicate with one another. So really there isn't a conversation for Ben and I that is off, off limits there. Are, we've always said to each other, like, firstly, if I've annoyed you, irritated you, or you have a resentment towards me, let me know, let me know immediately so that we can talk it out. And then secondly, Ben does not always agree with me and I do not always agree with Ben. So we'll get that and then we'll discuss. But the truth is like that checking the ego at the door allows for, I can hear Ben and what he's saying. And actually, oh, what he's saying sounds more reasonable than my brain was suggesting something might be. And we get to walk down those roads and maybe make a different decision than I would have done on my own because my ego had got involved. So mm -hmm. I think that ability to openly communicate with one another and know that it's safe to do so is, is also super important. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's actually leads into my next question is what do you do? And you kind of already answered it, but what do you do when there's a, what, what do you do when there's a difference of opinion? And I think you answered it perfectly, right? You, when you have the ability to step right. back and, and you really like, um, <clears throat> you know, like think about the other person's perspective. It oftentimes makes you realize like, oh, okay. The other, the other person is right in this case. Right. Um, but it, are there any times where, are there any times where there's there's friction where it's 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 been a challenge? I mean, there have been times where we've had differing uh, opinions on something, and we both kind of feel like ours is maybe a stronger version, uh, a choice than the other. Um, I think it kind of comes down to one of two things: either James just realizes he was wrong, and we go with my idea, or. Uh, <laughs> Or we, you know, the truth is it really comes down to just, again, sort of respect. It's sometimes, I feel like what I have realized is James doesn't do that a lot. I probably do that more than him. Uh, I have something in me that just feels like, well, but this is, this is like the cleanest way. This is the whatever. I have this sort of like neurological disorder that makes me think that that's the case. And so I feel like when he stands up and says something and it feels like he really feels like that's the place. I'm generally, I'm going to state my case. And if he doesn't really budge, I'm probably going to, because it's so rare, I'm probably going to go, okay, great. Then I'm sure, I'm sure you're right. I am definitely sure you're confident in it. So what's it going to be slight? Am I, you know, am I going to hold a, a grudge on some small little design element? No. Like, are you kidding me? God bless the fact that you're putting that much mental capacity into it. And the truth is, and it pisses me off. He's right. He's right in the end. I think the the nice thing is getting to the place where it's done. And then you get to look at whatever the, the outcome was for that. And if it wasn't blatantly wrong, it was the right choice, you know? Mm. So uh, no, it's pretty rare, luckily with us. Um, but I think in those moments, know that you've, if you feel like you have the right person on your team, you know, if you have the right partner, you're going to have to respect each other and sometimes that's giving sometimes that's receiving you know mm -hmm. so have a perfect answer james do you have a better poetic way of doing that i think it's a great answer uh, I, I really don't and the the actual specific answer for me is no there there is i can't even i was like usually i can go back and think i don't think there's ever been some kind of um area that we have found a disagreement on that hasn't been worked out in the day that we found the disagreement. I'll be totally honest. And by that point, it, it's done. Like we kind of have a system in place that we didn't even know that, uh, that we didn't create. It's just 
we agree we we disagree we talk we keep talking until we come i i really there's just nothing that has been so important to either of us where we're like okay i can't we can't talk about this right like there's just nothing in our work life that has ever created that and i think the other part of that is as we grew as business partners we also grew as friends so the very first eight months of our our relationship was he and i every single day trying to pick up apartments together that's what we were doing every single day and if we once we did that we were then building uh furniture together and we let all of these steps kind of showed us who each other was like they seem kind of basic but they're not they're like how we do those things or how we do everything so all of that all of that eight months was a learning experience and there is not a day that goes by where we don't talk to each other and i would say i cannot even tell you how many hours he and i have spent on the phone over this four years it's hours and hours and hours because we like each other and because we really care about it all we really want to have a business that's successful that we lead um yeah so I, that, that kind of went over your question but now is does the fact that you guys live in different places is does that make it more challenging or probably in some ways it's tough to know i mean we were we did live near each other for the beginning of the business um and yeah it is it probably a little bit better in many ways? Yeah, I, I I wish we could be out grabbing coffee and having discussions and you know that kind of thing. I think that there is a leg up to that. In the same in the same way though, like we're also in multiple markets, which allows us. You know, I drive. I can drive up to for Springfield. You know, like I can just pop up anytime I need to. Um, in theory, and so like I'm around all these markets. He's around like those markets. So there's a there's a benefit to it in some ways. We also had already built our business and this is something I'm always passionate about. Uh, build it to where it can be remote. I work from my phone 96 to 98 percent of my work life is on my phone. So even when we start with a new technology partner, I want to know what the phone experience is versus laptop because you know, I, yeah, of course we have to sit at our laptops and do certain things there, but I want it to be as little as it has to be. So I think we had already built our business to be a mobile, we were in other markets already. And so it's like, we had figured out how to work remotely uh, from the properties. And so I think the the adjustment was figuring out how that works with us not being near each other. Uh, I think technically it works pretty easy, but are there benefits to being near each other um, definitely, you know, I think just as any partnership would. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, <clears throat> cool, guys. I, 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 know, I know you guys have another meeting coming up, so I uh, want to respect your time. But uh, before we wrap up, uh, I would love to um, get your thoughts on, you know, you guys went through the Legends X program and we really loved working with you guys. You guys absolutely crushed it. Uh, we're actually running a promotion for Labor Day. So for if you're listening and you want to uh, go for the Legend X program, you can actually get a 50% uh, discount. Uh, just go to overnightsuccess.io slash X. Uh, this promotion will run to Tuesday, until Tuesday. Um, you know, Monday, everyone's like probably like, uh, you know, celebrating and uh, taking a day off. So uh, we'll extend it one day to Tuesday. But um, can you guys just in a few minutes share your experience of going through Legends X and any any advice that you would have for, for people who are interested in the in the program? I just want to get one clarification. Did you say 15 or 50? Five zero. Yeah, we're going all out. Wow. Wow. I'm not here to be I a know, salesperson. Right? You're on the fence. Do it. All right, go ahead, James. Oh, um, so we were, we were a definite hectic host, uh, when we, when we started, when we started with you, um, and when we, when we started the program, I, you know, Ben spoke about how I have that kind of mentality of, right, let's just get on with it. But I will say that, uh, your course kind of just helped me to really drill down on like done is better than perfect that's a that's really stood out mm -hmm. for me um but i needed the course to understand what that really meant 
Um, and I mean, what has the course has just given us so, so much, whether it's uh, organization and systems for, for our back office, for our team, two VAs, um, the ability for us to work on our business rather than in it. Like we are still, we still do messages at times, but the truth is purchasing that property comes because we don't have to be dealing with all of the the inside tasks that we used to deal with. I mean, it's just, I, I think we are, I would really say the one of the biggest parts that's come from it is an organizational structure that allows us not to be hectic. And that's massive. I think we didn't realize how involved we were. We've taken vacations now where I've taken the lead and Ben has gone away and put his phone down, which by the way is huge. And, the, and vice versa. I've gone away. Ben's looked after it all as as lead, and we have the VAs that are turning that are turning this over more often than not. So that's massive too. None of us, neither of us, could put our phones down. Like we'd be away, and we still had them out because what happens if we miss something? How do we keep the business going? What happens if there's an error? We don't have anybody. Like it's tiring just talking about it, let alone actually living it. But until we came to the course, I don't think we realized how in depth we were living the hectic host life and that mm. for us has been a huge shift in a year awesome yeah I, I feel like it took us from like you guys say hectic host to 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 you know hotelier or you know whatever it is for each business but i feel like it took us from being self-employed to being business owners you know like the the course really allowed us and we again we both are in this way, we're action takers. If we if we say we're going to like take a course, we're going to take it seriously and we're going to focus on it and we're going to take action. Um, and I think that's all very important. You have to, anybody who's going to be taking this course, know that you should not be planning anything else during these three months. Like it, it takes, it takes diligence and it, it, if you don't stay on top of it, you'll get behind. There's a lot to, to learn here. And I have, I have spread some of the knowledge to, I have friends in all different industries that like their businesses are doing really well, but there is a certain point where I think as entrepreneurs or even just business owners in general, you hit your own ceiling. What this did for uh, both of us was go, oh my gosh, not, not exactly. It's, it's almost like saying, here's a business in a box. Here's, here's a way to run your business so that it can be successful. Oh my God. Well, these are things we were already doing this, this, and this. But wow, did I learn a lot about better ways we could implement this. These things are all completely new. They peel back the curtain that, that of fear. You know, now I see how it works like in detail with somebody who's actually done it. They bring in, you know, maybe another expert for that even or whatever it happens to be. All of a sudden, the fear of the unknown is gone. And literally, you gave us tools. I remember there's one week. I don't want to spoil it, I guess. But there's there's some stuff that you give most weeks as well. And one of those weeks I thought was worth the whole lot of, of the whole course when you, when, you know, you gave us something that we will take and continue to use in this business forever. And I've told, I've told friends in other industries, I wish they had something for your industry because all of it applies to any business, but it is very much tailored to the short-term rental market. Um, and so I've given them nuggets and it's actually changed their businesses with things that we've learned from you guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of business fundamentals, right. That, that really apply, would apply to any business. Um, which is, uh, which I've had similar conversations with my friends too, who I explained them about legends X and they're like, Oh, I'm kind of interested in taking your course, even though they're, they're not hosts or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, sharing that. Um, and uh, last but not least, let uh, everybody know how they can find you. If people want to work with you or people want to stay at your units, uh, where can we go? Uh, you can find us uh, online, at actually a lot of different places, but our, our main website is arriveandthrive.co.co. Um, and we're building out some other ones specifically for you know other industries, but find us at arriveandthrive.co. Um, and uh, yeah, if you ever, if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out. We, we really get a lot of joy out of, um, out of supporting other people in this industry. Uh, you know, I think it, it can become a, 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 a world where you're just barraged with, with uh, things you have to come up with solutions to. So um, feel free to reach out. We're, we're, 
we're big believers of, of certain things and um and we're happy to share that with you. So arrive and thrive.com. Arrive and thrive.com. Awesome guys. Well, I really appreciate you guys uh being part of our community and uh jumping on the podcast here to talk about your story and the partnership. So thank you for that. And to the listeners, hope you enjoyed this episode. I feel like we could probably talk for another hour. Um, but <laughs> but uh yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode. And again, if you uh if you are interested in Legends X, then this is your chance for Labor Day. We're doing a crazy five zero percent off the course. Uh, so go to overnightsuccess.io slash X. And with that said, uh, it's Friday. So happy Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend and we'll, we'll see you next time.